Good morning. I'm Adriano Travaglia from European Startup Association. I'm very glad today to be with one of the most important entrepreneur and investor based in Spain, who is Rodolfo Carpentier. Good morning, Rodolfo. Good morning. How are you? Fine. And you? Very well. Very well. I mean, with the circumstances, obviously, uh, a bit restrained, but I mean, we cannot do anything but uh, continue working now, and we do that from home now. I know, I know that you, in your uh, dozens of years of experience in the business sector, you uh, started with the digitalization of the companies in the 90s. So, can might you introduce briefly yourself, please? Well, my name is Rodolfo Carpentier. I'm uh, an investor and an entrepreneur. I have started uh, doing my best, uh, my first investment in Dubai uh, in 1982. And since then, I have invested in over 50 companies, and some of them have been very successful. And obviously, I have lost a few of them. Yeah, <laughs> obviously, it, it's a sort of statistic, you know. So, <laughs> but. Uh... What are the sectors in which you uh, you have your businesses? Well, that has been changing. I mean, I've been uh, at the very beginning. I was with the ISPs. I mean, when we started in 1994, around uh, that was uh, the the wave when people wanted to get into internet and they needed to get through an ISP. So I invested in ISPs. Then I have invested in incubators and then I have invested directly in companies. So it has been changing over time. I mean, I've been always riding the internet wave at the time. Now you are uh, the founder of an incubator. Can you talk about, uh, can you tell us a bit more about your uh, current projects? Well, at this moment in time, I mean, I have a company which is called DAD and in DAD, we are about 90 uh, investors. And through the AD, we have invested about 7 million euros in all continents. I mean, in China, where we have lost everything, uh, in the States, where we still expect to get something, in Chile, where we got the money back, and in Europe, in Spain, where we have been pretty successful in some of the investment we've done. Oh, perfect. And uh, what are the, the common features of, of the best companies you supported to grow? You mean uh, uh, traditionally or now? Oh, no. What are the, the features, as I don't know, uh, in, uh, for example, the service or the product, uh, the quality of the, of the people, of the team? Uh, I don't know. Well, the main, the main uh, uh, issue has always been the team. I mean, when we have done very well, we have had a very strong team and a very good financial guy behind it. So those are the, the companies that have done very well, were companies where we had a very strong team and good finances. Okay, perfect. And uh, uh, what are your suggestions for the, startup, for the startups that want to uh, convince you uh, to, uh, to do the investment in their, in their business? Well, in my case, it has been changing all the time, but now we are in a situation where I'm only interested in companies that are completely different to the rest. So I'm not interested in any Me Too. I'm just interested in companies that have a very good business model that has nothing to do with anything in the market and that have very uh, strong ambitions to become a, a large company. So, uh, at the end, you, you are looking for companies who, uh, that have, uh, that have uh, disruptive ideas. That have disruptive ideas that can scale and that can be implemented with a good team. Okay, so nowadays we have a lot, uh, plenty of companies that are, uh, can you say, um, that are trying to do the same businesses of the uh, American ones. So they, they are, can I say, uh, doing uh, something like Facebook, something like Google, something like that. What, what are your expectations uh, from the startups well, that we have in Europe? 
that used to be a, a good comparison. I mean, we had in the past invested in companies that uh, were ahead in Europe of something that were already established in the States, but we're not doing that any longer. I mean, at this moment in time, I'm only interested in companies that really can, uh, that are very ambitious and that they cannot be compared with anything else. Okay. And uh, we are uh, living uh, very bad times for humans. Uh, and so uh, it means that changes are often unexpected. And uh, uh, can we say that pivoting our business model and or, or quickly modify our business model is one of the uh, can I say, uh, best characteristic for a company that wants to uh, um, grow, but always to consolidate their results? Well, I mean, that's what they call pivoting. And uh, pivoting is something that has been done with a lot of success in the past. But if you get to uh, a company that really has very clear in mind what they want to achieve, they might do some changes uh, in the way they do the business model at the end but they have a name at, uh, at, the, uh, at the end of the road that is always the same. I mean, they want to dominate something. Okay. Uh, do you want to say anything else to our uh, community? You know, our community is based on uh, investors and startups, but also other stakeholders as cities and uh, public agencies and uh, or, or incubators and accelerators. So what, uh, uh, what can you say to our uh, stakeholders? Well, I think the, the times that are coming are going to be tough and resilience is going to be something that you need to really have at hand. You have to be very, very resilient because uh, things are not, go not going to be very easy, but you're going to um, have a lot of opportunities. I mean, within the next three or four months, uh, the world will have changed like nothing we have seen before. And companies that adjust very fast will have a lot of opportunities. Thank you so much, Rodolfo. I hope to meet you in person sooner. <laughs> also Anytime, because, Adriano. Yeah, it will mean that we will, uh, uh, we will be out of this emergency. And um, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, let's see. what, what you, Be healthy. <laughs>